Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Smoked Chicken Salad. Well, I want to start off today by saying Happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers out there and everyone else, make sure you tell your mom you love her. Today we're going to be cooking something that feels pretty motherly to me. Uh, it's chicken salad. I think that's something your mom would like to make for you. She probably has made for you. Of course, we're gonna put our spin on it. We're gonna be smoking the chicken on the offset smoker. So the first thing we gotta do is get the fire going. All right, so here in the uh, fire box on our offset, we're gonna start with a fire starter cube here just to get that lit. And then we're gonna do a chimney of charcoal as our coal base. So we get the Weber chimney down there. I'm gonna load this up with some lump charcoal. And then we're just gonna wait for the charcoal to get hot all the way to the top. We've already got smoke, so we're getting started. In the meantime, let's go over and get our bird prepped. So today we're gonna be cooking a whole chicken and we're gonna be preparing it spatchcock style. What that means is that we're gonna take out the backbone so we can flay this open and cook it nice and flat. Now the great thing about this recipe is that you can use this recipe with any leftover chicken you have. But if I'm starting from scratch, this is how I wanna do it. We're starting with a four pound chicken this is one of those smart chickens that hasn't been injected with a bunch of stuff. So I know it really hasn't been affected much, which is great. We just want to taste the rub and the smoke. So once we get to the right side of that backbone, we'll just flip this around. We'll go down the opposite side of the backbone there. We're going to come around to where the leg is. And I can even pop this to find out where I need to cut in between these joints, just like that. And that shows me where that little bend is. And then we go right down to the bottom of that backbone. So now the backbone's out. You can save that for stock if you want to make some chicken stock, or you can toss it uh, depending on what you're doing. Then the back side of the bird, we just want to clean this up a little bit. Now on this side, I managed to take this bone out. On this side, I went on the opposite side of it. So I'm just going to do the same thing by pulling this bone back. And we'll get rid of that so it sits a little flatter. The other thing I like to do is come right in here in between the breasts on that breast bone. Just a little bit of a snip and that lays nice and flat. So I'm just gonna clean up this backside a little bit and kinda use my shears as a knife here. I want these legs a little bit separated from the body so I can control how tight or how far away I get them as we cook. I'll snip off some of these ribs just so that they don't affect the way that the bird sits and just makes it a little bit easier to get around in the end. We're gonna do the same thing over here. I'll just slip right underneath this membrane. Kind of work that leg free. And I'm gonna clean up those ribs just a little bit. Now certainly you don't have to do all of this extra work. You could just cut the backbone out throw some seasoning on it, and throw it on the grill. This is just gonna make it a little bit easier for us to get the meat off the bones in the end. So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna expose the meat so that we can get some rub and some seasoning on there. So I'm gonna start with the legs here. We're just gonna pull these back. We're not pulling the skin all the way off. We just wanna be able to see that meat, and then we'll push it right back in there. Same thing over here. Work the skin off the flesh. right back in and then we're going to flip this and pull that whole skin on top of the breast back so we can expose that breast to get our seasoning on there as well. So now that we've got the skin and the bird prepped, we're going to jump into the seasoning. So I'm going to open that back up. We're going to hit this with a little bit of our Dijon mustard first. And then we've got the Cattleman's Grill Ranchero seasoning. Now this is essentially designed to be a poultry seasoning. We often use it on our Thanksgiving turkeys, although it doesn't have those, uh, necessarily have those Thanksgiving holiday notes. It's just great on poultry. Same thing here, we're gonna drop a little bit of our Dijon on there, and then hit it with the Ranchero. And then just slide that right back into the skin. Now it's fully enclosed, all of that seasoning, all that goodness is stuck inside the skin. Get the other leg here.
slide that back in. Cover it up. You've got seasoning underneath all of that skin. Now I'm just going to pop over here to the top. See the top of those breasts are still without any seasoning, so we'll hit those. And then here, just for good measure, we'll do a little bit on the back side as well. So the skin I'm not so concerned about. I am going to hit it with just a little bit of seasoning. I don't need it for the chicken salad. I'll let you do with it what you want. I'm not going to ask any questions. All right, our charcoal is hot almost all the way to the top, so we're going to go ahead and dump this out. And then I'm just going to rake this to the back of the firebox because that's where, where we're going to be controlling our fire, building our fire, keeping and adding to our fire this entire cook right there on the back, back half of this firebox. And what we're going to be adding during the cook now is some apple wood. So this is apple split wood. We'll do a couple pieces here just to kick things off. And then we're going to take one piece and throw it right here at the front of the firebox to warm up. That way when we roll this over onto the fire later, it ignites instantly. So this right here, this is how we're going to control and maintain a really nice, clean fire at a temperature that we're looking for, which is about 275 to 300 today. We keep that small fire in the back, it burns hot all the time. When we roll a warm log on top, it ignites instantly. So we're never chugging out that thick gray smoke, we're always running that thin blue smoke. Best possible smoke scenario. Honestly, the Yoder makes it easy. Once we get that airflow dialed in, we're just gonna stick right to it at 275 to 300. All right, so we're stabilized at about 275 on the loaded Wichita now. I'm gonna bring our bird right up here. Might as well just go dead center since we've got the whole thing to ourselves today. But we talked about with these legs separated now, we can kind of control if we want them snug in just a little bit tight, we can do that. If they get to where these are done and the breasts are not, we could always pull these off. In fact, we can even separate them really easily. For now, we'll just kind of leave them leaned up. Now they're all about on the same level. That's that spatchcock magic. So chicken's been smoking for just over two hours now. We're getting close on the internal temperature. We're not quite there yet. And our temperature's starting to dip, so I think we're gonna need one more log. But before we do that, I just wanna give you a peek at what, what's going on inside the smoker. That is looking pretty. Great color on the outside. We're clocking in just shy of 153 and we need a few more degrees than that. So let's roll one more log over. All right, that guy should take us through the end of the cook. Well, it's two and a half hours total on the smoke now and our chicken has come up to above 155 in the breast. That's what we're looking for. In the legs, you'll find it's quite a bit higher. Even up to 175 is great. So we're going to take this guy off and we'll head back to the table to tear this thing apart. Just open it up really a little bit because we want it to chill down quickly so we can make our chicken salad. So I'm going to go ahead and just expose the breasts here. Take that skin off the top. We'll slip the legs out of the skin as well. Like I said, we just don't need skin for chicken salad. That doesn't mean you can't use this for something else. In fact, Maybe I'll just go ahead and save this in the freezer and we'll talk about some different projects you can use your chicken skin for in the future. So this stuff's essentially ready to shred. We can kind of tear it apart a little bit. I really just want to, like I said, I want to open it up. In this case, we're going to try and cool this down and make some chicken salad today. But again, this is a great utilizer of leftovers. So you don't have to do this quickly. You just want the chicken to be cool by the time you're making the salad. And this doesn't have to be pretty or perfect right now, but it smells amazing. All right, so I'm gonna throw that in the fridge to chill. So now we're gonna to pull together all the other ingredients for that chicken salad. So as soon as that chicken's cooled down, we can throw it right in. So first thing we're gonna need is some mayo. We're doing a half cup of mayo for an entire chicken. But when you think about how much chicken's going on top of this, it's a pretty insignificant amount. Next, we're gonna come in here with our Coslix Dijon, and we want about two tablespoons of this mustard. 
So that right there is kind of the base of the dressing, if that's what you want to call it. We're also going to add a little bit of bread and butter jalapenos. These are pretty mild, really, but any bread and butter pickle will work. And since we're using them, I'm just going to add a teaspoon or two of that pickling juice as well. Then I'm going to get in here and grab a couple tablespoons of the jalapenos and mince those up. But this is kind of our relish to go into our chicken salad. So there's all kinds of options, uh, but this is a great little sweet, spicy option. Next, we're gonna add some of that onion bite and a lot of freshness, really, with some green onions. Just the tips here, the green parts. We're gonna mince this down to, oh, about a quarter cup. So now we're gonna get a little creative with our ingredients. We're gonna add a little bit of apple to our chicken salad. And we're just gonna do that by running it through the box grater. I want about one half cup of grated Fuji apple here. And then finally, we've got some cashews here. Uh, these are salted cashews, so they're gonna add both salt and texture to our chicken salad. Now, nuts are a great thing to add to a chicken salad because they can really change and make some extra variety in that texture. I'm just gonna crush these down so we don't have any really big pieces, but we'll still get a nice crunch out of them. So whether it's peanuts or sunflower seeds, whatever it may be, almonds, all good ideas. Today we're using cashews. And that's in about an equal amount of apple, half a cup each. So that's it. We're just going to mix it all up and we'll go get our chicken and add that in there. In the end, we're going to need to taste and season with a little bit of uh, smoked salt and pepper. But for now, that's going to do it. All right, our chicken has chilled down now. I'm just going to pull it away from the bones at this point and then we're going to dice it up before throwing it in with our dressing. So we'll just want to make sure that we don't include any small bones or anything, any cartilage, none of that, nothing that we don't uh, want to actually chew on in the end. All right, so as this stuff kind of comes off the bones, we're going to do a little dice on it before we throw it into the bowl. Nice little bite-sized pieces. This is the last of it. Dark meat, white meat, it's all in there. Forget this spoon. I'm gonna get our hands dirty. Probably could have used a bigger boat. So just kind of get everything coated in here. And then the longer this sets, the better it's gonna taste in the end. But it's gonna be pretty dang good right off the bat. I can already smell that apple coming out of there. What a great little sweet component to add to a chicken salad and it's a little smoky which is great smoked chicken salad all right I'm gonna do a little taste mmm definitely a touch of sweetness I get the apple immediately but then I get the smoke there's just enough fat from the mayonnaise to help coat everything, and that's what carries flavor. When that fat spreads out, it carries the flavor to all the corners of your mouth. I'm getting all the components right now. I think the only thing we could use is a, just a bit of pepper. I'd like a little pop, a little spice from that pepper, and just a touch of smoked salt. Not much at all. We'll go a little bit coarse with our pepper too. So this is ready now. Like I said, you can eat it immediately or let it sit. Let all those flavors meld, but we could go ahead and throw this on a piece of bread for a sandwich. Throw on some lettuce for a salad. Whatever's in your heart. All right, I'm gonna load some up on some sourdough here. Okay. yeah. 
just like your mom would make for you. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoyed the recipe, hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.